Bert is one of those models that were based on the famous Transformers architecture and had a gigantic impact in the world of AI when they were first published. So in this video, let's see what BERT is, how it works, and how you can use it too. This video is brought to you by Assembly AI. Assembly AI is a company that is making a state-of-the-art speech-to-text API. If you want to use this API for free, you can go ahead and get your free API token using the link in the description. Okay, but what is BERT? So BERT is basically a language model that has the capacity to learn specific tasks when it comes to language. And it can do this because it understands language. It has the understanding of how the words relate to each other. And that way, if you fine tune it, you can specifically have it perform well on different types of language tasks. As you might have heard somewhere else before, you basically train these models in two separate chunks. First is the actual training of the language model, where we call pre-training. And then the second one is fine-tuning, so training the model specific to a task. These tasks could be question answering, sentiment analysis, text classification, named entity recognition. So these models, because they understand language, they are able to perform a lot of different tasks that have to do with language. Pre-training a model like BERT takes a very long time and it needs a lot of data. That's why it has been pre-trained for us. So if you want to use BERT right now, all you need to do is to fine tune it to a task that you need. Okay, but what does BERT look like? So let's look at the architecture of it. If you remember Transformers, and if you don't know anything about Transformers, you can go watch our Transformers video. I will leave a link for you. Uh, if you remember from Transformers, we have encoders and decoders. So encoder learns the context of the language and decoder does the specific task that we need it to do. And if you also remember from GPT-3, which we made a video about, I will again leave the link somewhere here so you can go watch that video if you haven't yet. With GPT-3, what we did was we only stacked decoders on top of each other to create GPT-3. And that was the main thing behind GPT-3's architecture. Well, with BERT, what we do is we stack encoders on top of each other. So basically, BERT only consists of encoders. Normally, in a transformer architecture, the context is learned in the encoder section of the architecture. And then this context is passed to the decoder to help it complete the task that it was trained on. And most of the time, it was translation. What BERT is, is the encoders stacked on top of each other. So at the end, you have a model that learns the context of language and that's it. And that's why we call it a language model, a model that has a good understanding of language and how it works. What BERT is, of course, is not only a stack of encoders in terms of architecture. It needs a way for the inputs to be embedded. It also needs a way for the output to make sense. So, of course, then you might have different types of layers after the output of your encoders and you might have different types of inputs based on what you're inputting to the model. The output style will change based on what you're training BERT on or after a while, after a while what you're doing the fine tuning with. But for the input layer, we have three different information that is being embedded to the inputs. The first one is positional encoding. If you remember from our Transformers video, in the transformers, we are giving all our input words in a sentence at the same time to the transformer. So what happens then is it's really hard to know where a word belongs in a sentence. That's why you use positional encodings to pass that information of location to your transformer. The second one is segment or sentence embeddings. In these embeddings, basically we're doing the same thing like positional encodings. The difference is that we are looking at the difference of the first and the second sentence because when you're doing different uh, trainings with BERT, for example, if you're doing question answering or if you're doing next uh, sentence prediction, you might be giving more than one sentence to the transformer or the model that you're training. So at the end, you need a way to distinguish what belongs to the first sentence and what belongs to the second sentence. And lastly, we have token embeddings and token embeddings are basically the representation of each word, each single word in a numerical way. Okay, now we understand what the architecture looks like, but how do you train something that just understand the core of language. You're not trying to train it in one single task, right? This is not a specialized model. You're trying to understand language generally. So what do you do to train this model? What do you do, what do, you do to teach this model how language works? 
So normally what we did before was to next word prediction task. So what they do is they have a sentence and they train the model to try to predict the next sentence. We saw this in transformers. But what we do in BERT or what they've done to train it is train it on two different tasks. The first one is called max language modeling and the second one is called next sentence prediction. With mask modeling what we do is we get a sentence and inside the sentence 15% of the words are being masked so basically left blank and the goal of the model is to predict what needs to go inside those blanks in the sentence. With next sentence prediction what you do is you give your model two sentences that are supposed to either come one after another or not and it's your model's goal to tell you whether they belong together or they don't. By training BERT on these two tasks, researchers were able to get a really well-performing language model. But of course, you might not want to use only next sentence prediction or mask language modeling. You might want to use BERT for other tasks. So for that, you need to do fine tuning. To fine tune a BERT model, you basically need two things. The first one being a new output layer that you're going to plug at the end of BERT that is specific to the task that you're trying to perform. And the second thing is a data set, again, that is specific to the task that you're trying to achieve. So for example, if you want to do sentiment analysis, you basically need to plug in a output layer of neurons after BERT that is going to classify the input that it gets from the BERT, which will be the output of BERT, into different sentiment labels that you want. So you can think of this basically as when you're designing a normal neural network, just a deep neural network, let's say, you are de designing what the output needs to be based on the task. So it's basically the same thing and this it's the same logic when you're doing it with BERT too. Or if you want to do named entity recognition, what you can do is to feed the output tokens that come from BERT for each word into a classification layer that will classify them into different named entity labels. When you're doing fine tuning, what is being updated is the parameters of this new output layer that you just plugged into BERT. There are still some parameters that are being updated in the BERT too, but they're really minor updates. So that's why what you have at the end is a very fast fine tuning process. Google researchers who have made the model BERT very generously shared the source code with the public. So you can find the link to their repository in the description below too. But a couple of things that you need to know about this uh, library in general or any other BERT model that you might find online, for example, in the Hugging Face library, is that there are levels of BERT and there are different languages of BERT. You can choose to work on it with Spanish or Chinese or in English, whatever you want. But also you get a uh, BERT small or BERT base model, which only only has 110 million parameters and you have a large model which generally works a little bit better I mean of course it's a little bit bigger it's a little bit better right but that one has 340 million parameters but you have to remember that these are already trained parameters that you do not have to train this from scratch so if you have the power if your computer can handle it you can go with the large BERT model and see how that works for you. I hope this video was helpful to understand what BERT is how it was trained how it works under the hood the architecture of it and also how you can get started with it. I will leave some help helpful links in the description below so that you can start playing around with BERT if you want to. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a like and maybe even subscribe to be one of the first people to know when we publish a new video. And before you go away, don't forget to go grab your free API token from Assembly AI using the link in the description. But for now, have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.